this is about applying intelligence to treasury. And one particular, one special part of, of treasury, the working capital area, the area of yeah, payment terms, payments, uh, the area of, uh, I put in a couple of buzzwords that we heard here on the floor, obviously supply chain finance and stuff like that. So that's what I want to talk about and how AI, artificial intelligence, data can help here to make the right decisions. Quick about me, my name is Max, Max Armand. I happen to be the co-founder of Taulia. I, uh, in terms of background, I spent some time in my previous startup that got acquired by Readsoft in AP automation, invoicing, payments. And I started my career with my beautiful German accent uh, at SAP, where I was uh, responsible for the payment program, which comes quite handy if you talk about supplier financing and paying suppliers uh, to know how SAP systems pay actually suppliers. Uh, let's, uh, let's start with uh, more generic high level on artificial intelligence. Um, we initially had a little question mark here whether AI is the next game changer. I, I removed that question mark because it is and we can talk in detail more. I have just a few examples to set the stage on AI, data and where AI is at work today. And then I want to make the case how this translates to what we actually care about or what we care about on this conference because I think we care very much about a few of those things in general. Um, driverless cars. So obviously data today is uh, and artificial intelligence and the data that those cars co uh, collect is used to, uh, to enable auto autonomous driving, to make, make it possible that cars can drive without a driver. Not only can drive, but drive in a much safer way. So I don't think it's a bold prediction, actually it's pretty much common knowledge, that uh, in a few years when, star uh, when cars really start driving on their own, uh, insurance policy will be more expensive, but not for self-driving cars, but for us that want to still drive on our own. Um, yes, sounds weird and scary, but it will happen. Um, one thing that annoys me a little bit and makes me sad is that Tesla is leading the charge here. As a German, I want to see obviously Mercedes and Volkswagen. Um, good news though is um, I spent the last 12 years in Silicon Valley, so uh, that makes me then happy again and proud of Silicon Valley. It's a little bit like, like in soccer. My, uh, my wife is Spanish, I'm German, and uh, yeah, one of the two teams always wins, right, uh, in, 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 in the championship. So, uh, I similar here with Tesla, I guess, or with, with, with cars. Um, more serious topic, uh, obviously, in, in healthcare, uh, in tumor diag diagnosis, um, where we see here actually IBM Watson at work, where IBM Watson does pattern recognition to, yeah, diagnose tumors, uh, 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 cell mutations earlier. Um, earlier, better, more precise than humans. So that is already happening today, uh, measurably, where uh, artificial intelligence does a better job than humans. It's great, so it will save lives, literally save lives, awesome. Now back to the opposite of not so serious stuff, but still important for all of us, Netflix, um, or any movie slash TV show uh, uh, streaming site that, that you want to pick. Um, what happens at Netflix when you go to Netflix and you watch something? In 70% of the cases, 70%, it's not actually you that decides what you want to watch, it's Netflix recommending you what other people saw. And that's not a bad thing because it totally hits your taste and recommends it. Um, an example that we don't have here is like a similar one at Amazon. In 35-ish percent of all cases at Amazon when you show up, when you buy something, it's not necessarily because you want to buy that, but because Amazon tells you that others bought that and you might like that. So that's where we see artificial intelligence at work. Big data, like billions of data points used uh, to match you against your peers and make recommendations, really precise recommendations that actually work. So how the heck does all that, what does that to do with, with treasury? So yeah, that's what I want to do in the next like uh, three, four minutes to make the point here. What does that to do with treasury? It's not a big deal to know what a single supplier, so if, I'm, if you're a buying organization, if you're treasury in a big buying organization, it's not a big deal to know what a single supplier prefers in terms of what do we have here? Payment terms, when to pay a supplier, is he acceptable to certain discounts, does he have certain preferences when it comes to seasonality, when he wants to be paid. So for a single supplier, not a big deal, not very tough, right? Um, for a handful of suppliers, um, or even for, my, some of you might argue for all my suppliers, you know, I would. I would guess that's a pretty tough job. And specifically, do you really know? That's the question. Where I'm going to is this. Because what we do at Taulia, and that others do that as well, we're actually not looking at an individual supplier only. Yes, we know that, as good as you do, what this individual supplier wants and needs and, and does. But we know from thousands of suppliers in our network what they do every day. 
what they prefer, what they want, what they choose, and uh, how they react, how they use the system. And we use that data to actually extrapolate, use artificial intelligence on those billions of data points to know what suppliers, in terms of working capital preferences, need, what they want, what they will accept. And uh, we combine it, by the way, with uh, some, so the, the data that we collected, we combine it with some pretty boring, old-fashioned data sources, like, I don't know, Dun & Bradstreet, and sorry if there's anyone here, but like a little bit outdated data, Dun & Bradstreet or Equifax and all that stuff, where now it gets actually meaningful. If you combine it with fresh, actual data, you run an AI and combine it with third parties. Um, and that's what we do. And uh, why would you care? Um, well, because we then use that data to optimize your working capital program. The offers that we put out to suppliers, when do we be paid, how do we be paid, and who do we talk to? We do that automatically, real time, and permanently, because things change. That's what we do for your suppliers, automatically offering. And why do we do that? Why, again, should you care? Because we, well, we, <laughs> we maximize your working capital with that, uh, and or yield. If you're into dynamic discounting, meaning you want to use your own cash to deploy and get some returns, yeah, then we maximize the yield with that. I have a few examples on that. I actually, time-wise, I think I showed a product real quick. And here we are. I only see it here, it doesn't matter. So it's a little bit hard for me to navigate. So anyway, it's pretty hard to show AI because the point of an AI is that it happens automatically and in the background. But nevertheless, we have a little bit here of a, a, a view, a dashboard on, on how we classify suppliers and how it looks like. So because it's a little bit hard for me to navigate, let me go back to the PowerPoint because I have some of those slides actually copied out. Um, the tool that we uh, present, to, not today, like this year, this summer, is called Polaris. Um, it's, powered, it's powering our network, our Talia network, and I'll get to that in a minute. And uh, so let's look at a couple of screens a little bit better. Yeah, the resolution is actually pretty bad. Again, pretty easy to know what a single supplier prefers in your case, a supplier that you do business with. 15% API is insane, right? We all know that. But let, let's say you think it's 15% 15, uh, 15 APR, and there's a certain discount efficiency. I don't want to go into too many details, but this means if you want to offer early payments to that supplier, what do you get if you normalize it in millions offered? What do you get in return? And, well, if you look at that single supplier, you get $390 per every million offered. Not good. If you only do a very simple thing, and in the Talia network, you look at all the other buyers in our network, you already know if you adjusted a little bit the terms and the rates, you get to, I can't do the math, factor 20, 30, 30 is much efficient when it comes to discount return. So here's, and this is, by the way, not AI. This is just one supplier, and then we have like 20 different buyers he does business with. So no rocket science here, everybody can do that. Where it gets interesting is actually, if we look at that supplier in terms of his peers. Again, we have uh, about almost 2 million suppliers in our network, 1.8 million suppliers that transact. And for every single supplier, there are peers. And what is a peer? Well, a peer is a, uh, uh, it can be in terms of revenue, in terms of rating, the industries, geography. We use all, dot, uh, all those dimensions, those, uh, those uh, um, uh, criteria to define what means um, you are a peer of someone and use that data to make the right decisions. And then offer instead of 15, we go even better. It's 8.7 with those payment terms and get to an even better result. And that's the power of AI. It's not really looking at a single supplier or a single supplier with a few buyers. That's what we did for the last 10, 15, 20 years, everybody. It's now looking at a single supplier and there's millions of peers out there worldwide or wherever is relevant to the supplier. That's pretty much all I got. The last thing I say, this is not a pipe dream or something that comes uh, 2018, uh, like some of those blockchain stuff. And, and what, no, it's there and it's running today in our network and it's powering our programs today, our supply chain finance, our dynamic discounting programs for those customers. And you see those beautiful logos, they all are in our network. Thank you.